is uh, prevalence rate of 8.8 8 per 1000 and uh, I mean these are some of the things that uh, 3 million uh, the 6 out of 10 the causes are known so that's where is uh, another issue we will not discuss about the classification we will not go into the various uh, disabilities but all of you are aware that uh, disabilities is uh, much common and WHO has been working on that and, and the neuro disabilities are again uh, a group of congenital or acquired long term conditions that are attributed to impairment of the brain and or neuromuscular system and create a functional limitation and the diagnosis may not be identified but it may over a period of time occur alone or in combination and include a broad range of severity and uh, uh, complexity and the impact may include difficulties with movement, cognition, hearing and vision, communication, emotion and behavior. So what are the magnitude and burden of neurological disorder and disability and related disability? It is quite high and uh, you can see that 4.2% uh, of global burden of disease in 1996 was disability. First ever world report on disability by WHO World Bank suggests that more than a billion people in the world experience disability. And uh, increased to 6.2529 in 2005 assessed by the Daily for Common Neurological Disorder and estimated to be increased to 6.77 by 2030 and uh, anticipated total mortality due to neurological disorder is 12.22 by 2030 so it's quite high and if you see the global burden of neurological disorder by the WHO and percentages of total uh, daily for selected disease the neurological disorders are the one which stands out higher compared to other including uh, cancer and HIV and among these neurological disorder the epilepsy forms again a major and you could see that it's not going to change much till 2030 in spite of newer drug and surgery and what not coming so changes are not going to be much and we will continue to see the uh, daily, daily for neurological disorder that is the disability last year and uh, disability um, last years and also if you see that epilepsy is the third most common cause so after the stroke and the Alzheimer and migraine the epilepsy form 759 percent so that's the third really best of the disability adjusted life here and again the global burden on from the, as a total neurological disorder and death epilepsy forms 1.86 percent and I do not know if Sudan is being included, all cases of Sudan are included in this because in many countries Sudan is not yet being recognized as a cause of death. So it may even further increase. So now understanding the issues of neurodisability, epilepsy, patients and their caregiver. So why are we talking of neurodisability? It affects the motor system, so many of the children have epilepsia, ataxia, hypotonia, cerebral palsy is very common. It affects language and speech, it affects learning skills and behavior, memory you already said, cognition, swallowing, social also education, marriage, job and the family burden and lastly psychological comorbidities. comorbidities. So why need to worry? Medicine alone may reduce the epilepsy seizure but yet the person is not productive. So that's a very big question. Patient is bad, you are given medicine, he has no seizure, but he's drowsy most of the time. He's not able to go out of the house. He's not able to do the work. So that's the problem. Time has come to deal the disease epilepsy in total. Like all the other neurological disorders like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, where you treat them as a whole. So we are only looking at epilepsy as epilepsy and the epileptic drug. We're not looking beyond that. And now we should need to look at because it's affect the person, family, society, and the nation, everybody. Like any other neurological disorder, we need a multidisciplinary team to join the hands with the patient. How many people can boost that their center as multidisciplinary? Do they? No. 
So what is different in epilepsy? Why I say hidden, hidden disability? So different is child and parents, there is a problem. Adolescent growing up with epilepsy, they have been molded into the house, not allowed to go out, not allowed to go party, not allowed to go uh, with the friends overnight, problem. Adults with epilepsy, more trouble. Elderly people, different issue. They are staying alone, aged, fall, fracture, nobody to look after. Spouse, caregiver, they have a hidden problem, they can't explain to anybody what problem they are facing. And mother with epilepsy, late onset versus early onset, chronic cases. So all problems at all ages, different issue, need to be tackled differently. There cannot be one solution for everybody that pack you give and that's okay. You have to tailor make the problem. Now you have illiterate, rural dwellers in India, over God, overtly God fearing and blaming epilepsy as a curse from the God. So they are okay, they accept this is nothing, no treatment. Let the children leave it, Bhagwan Kadiya, God is given. That's it. Literate urban dwellers, but not so differently need. Stigma and poor attitude, run from pillar to post, with no solution. Anybody suggests go there, they go there. Take some time treatment, another seizure, they go to third person, they go. So literate also are no better that in terms of total cure in epilepsy. And taboos and catastrophe of patients who are seizure free post operative find difficult to accept normalcy. And family expectation, new life is still changing to the past. So family says you are operated, you are fine, come back as normal. Mm -hmm. But that person cannot suddenly change overnight. So that's another problem. This is the original um, model which I made, which I changed it, modified and shown to you in the morning different way, but this was the original model which we initially made to go into. And then what about epilepsy and into the disability, with neurodisability, without neurodisability. So we need to really divide into two. So what are the neurodisability? Physical, speech and solid, learning, cognitive, psychosocial. And they may be overlapping between learning and cognition because both go together and in and or there may be uh, cognitive, could be memory, behavioral, ADHD, autism in children. So there is a lot of overlap in the psychosocial or the cognitive disturbance or the learning behavior. But then nobody is talking about speech, language, physical disability, psychosocial disability. But they are the major one which causes the problem. So this is a multidisciplinary team which works with epilepsy. Uh, neurodisability and uh, all are important and in my center all of them are there so everybody is and that to free this is for free patient in fact my paid patient do not get all the services but the free patient gets everything whatsoever so that's the idea. so this is what we have been able to do so far and these are the data which I have already given to you so you know that so we have seen the first phase 2000 patient because we did not have physio or TST in the first cycle which I showed you there was only clinical psychologist so we have not included those 2000 patients that's the reason to 26,000 become 24,604 so these are the patients that are seen by a neurologist 10.4447 patients that is speech therapy saw 2577 these are data of course from the CAP Clinical psychologist saw 7.7% patient, the occupational therapist saw 11.07% and the physiotherapist saw 7.017%. So these are the patients, many of these patients were seen by two together or by three together or by four together. So there were patients who were seen by all the four, there were patients who were seen by two or three depending on the need of that particular patient in that particular time. So what is physical disability in patients with epilepsy? This is the proforma which is to be filled up during the camp. So all physiotherapists, they have the proforma here, you can see the therapist examining the patient, treating and then they give the goal and the plan to them. These are some of the physical disability which is present with neurological cases. I'm going to go into the detail but cerebral palsy, uh, uh, muscular dystrophy, 
traumatic brain injury could be very common. And there are various studies which suggest that uh, one to four injuries were reported in as many as 50% of patients with seizure, whether in children or adults. And even the first GTC, patient ever experienced, was reported to be associated with injury in early, nearly a third of the patient. You have shown your injury in the hand, you have shown the injury. So most of the patients with GTC, they fall somewhere and get injured. Some of the elderly people are more prone to fracture. And these are the patients uh, which has increased risk and then the less severe epilepsy like those absent seizure or other seizure who do not have that many of all. These are some of the papers which tell you that what are the prevalence of physical disability, health disability and related low incidence disability, particularly in school age children, the orthopedic impairment, traumatic brain injury, chronic neurological uh, condition, multiple disability, deaf blindness. And the first four categories represent approximately 16% of the PhD students receiving a special education with a range of 0.42% traumatic brain injury to 12.68% OHI. And uh, these are this chromosomal and genetic causes, thyroidogenic causes, prematurity, acquired cases. So these are probably the causes which affects the epilepsy and neurodisability. There is a very common association between cerebral palsy and the epilepsy and we do see a lot of patients with cerebral palsy in the remote area when we go for the camp and uh, therefore uh, we need to always look at cerebral palsy and therefore they need to be treated not only with anti-epileptic but other therapy and this is some of the paper which suggests that uh, uh, there is cyst jaundice etc perinatal distress including neonatal seizure neonatal ventilation ventilation and admission to a neonatal care unit increases the frequency of seizures and the neurodisability. So what education, physical health monitoring, modification and adaptation, communication, physical environment, class participation, use of assistive technology, specialized instructional strategy, specialized excellent in particular areas. So in our setting, in Whenever we always have different physiotherapy and different camp and uh, the students come from various colleges and some therapists come. So in those camps where well, there was one particular two therapists who were present, in those camps they have uh, uh, six camps, they have 159 patients which was analyzed into the, uh, in detail and there were normal were 56 and milestones were delayed in 103 patients. The contracture or deformity were present in 59 patients. Uh, ADL dependent were 54, partly dependent 42, and uh, dependent were 63, so independent were 54. And muscle power was fair in 50 and poor in 35 cases. So this was the analysis we could get. So we also presented the, one of the paper group therapy because. Many of these children come from the school where the mental retarded school or special school. So 50 of them come. All 50 may not have epilepsy. So the out of 50, say 15, 20 had epilepsy, but the rest all are there. So what we do is we take all their disability in group therapy. So that those 15 patients who are there. So we did a group therapy for these patients. So we had an observation study. We followed them for two months. Age group was 10 to 20, MMSC score was 18 plus, and the physical comorbidity related to epilepsy, Barthel index was 70. And we gave them an aerobic exercise, and 857 who visited, we gave 110 patients. Uh, we saw, and out of which 47 who met our criteria, they were taken. The school health worker is the one who was taken as one person point. He was taught the, he was advised to take video photo of the session and was simultaneously trained and he was the one who go back and do it every day upon those patients. And the result was uh, their stretching program and all that we did and the result was that these people were significantly better. So this is what uh, selecting a leader then asking them to do follow-up exercises, shoulder extension, finger exercise, turn side flexion, rotation.
this is tribal area and most poor area in Maharashtra, known as Jawar area. Maximum malnutrition deaths, how it is improved. So, Jawar, we have done the third camp, which is the so spot jumping. Many of them are mentally subnormal and have epilepsy. So, their teacher also was taught, and they was. Then comes the occupational therapy. So, this is a form of a occupational therapy. They cover this. And we had a couple of papers, our occupational therapist. One particular who has worked is doing now PhD in this way, but she's a lecturer in one of the occupational therapy college, and she has been working with me for three, four years as a social uh, free work. So she did a community-based rehabilitation for children with epilepsy and comorbidity, and uh, the multiple comorbidity was more to a cognitive and behavior, and heavy burden on children themselves, their family, and also on healthcare system. Children with uh, epilepsy and associated morbidity need rehabilitation program in consideration of epilepsy itself as well as multiple comorbidity. This the need is more so clearly evident in the community and the rural area. So what we did is we did the state of present occupation therapy program, role of occupation therapy, understand care your community as worker, and the form the future implication for OT. So these are some of the evaluation which was done, caregiver interview community health worker interviews, individual intervention and training, group intervention and training. So we do both individual as well as group and the follow up through the telemedicine. So we would do that uh, after about two months or something. So these are the results which we got. And uh, these are the 2,279 patients which we have seen. And uh, GDP, 7.11.5. Uh, intellectual disturbance 18.5, autism 9.2, ADHD 11.5, learning disorder 18.5, behavior issues 29.2% and others were 1.5%. And the ICF body structure and functional impairment which we assess psychosocial 32%, sensory motor 45% and cognitive postural 22%. And occupational performance area disability Play, there were 23% of patients of play, work and school 15.4 and ADL was 61.4%. Prior exposure to OT services, we asked them, has you ever gone to them? Discontinue, some people have gone 10.8, two times 16.2, once for 98%, but 53% never has ever been to the occupational therapist in spite of severe problems. And reason for not seeking OT services, no time, no use, given up and unaware of services. So you can understand that how serious this problem is because even physician, they teach them, they are not aware. Task safety capacity building is what is required because there is acute shortage of clinical personnel and healthcare professional. It's practically impossible for existing therapists to cater to entire children with epilepsy uh, and associated disability on a direct basis. But this was done on an indirect basis by task shifting capacity building, training the caregivers and community health workers to tackle various issues in OT uh, and seeking behavior. So intervention we were provided, both ICF structure we provided, sensory motor community person and for the OP areas, ICF participation, we gave activity of daily living, school work, play and leisure. So this help. This is sensory motor, so how to do, so the uncle or parents or grandfather is being taught, the sensory motor is being taught to many children biochemical therapies, uh, sensory integration therapy again being taught to them, uh, cognitive perspectival uh, activities were taught, and the parents or whosoever has come, they've been taught clearly that this is what is should be done. And uh, activity of daily living being taught, it's a mother or the patient, you know, forward training, backward training changing techniques, some low cost uh, adaptive aids like universal dots handling technique for energy conservation. And then social school work like writing and multisensory technique, they were taught like vocational counseling, independent work behavior, and this has been taught to them. In the camp one, in play and these are also been uh, given the importance. And role of uh, community health worker and uh, 
congregants uh, were also I been taught to them that what they should be doing, how they should be treating the children. So we were trained them so that they can follow it up. And role uh, in feasibility and susceptibility uh, had difficult understanding the therapeutic program. So they were not aware. They just said, we came, we showed the doctor, we are going back. But when we insisted upon them, then therefore they start a simple language for further explanation into the local language they sent. And the community health worker who helped us take on handouts with diagram shall help in continuing the whole program. So we make the diagram, we give it to them, do that. And the sustainability is what is over a period of time is very important because it's the interest and belief that will take the community worker or uh, they have to be once in a few months to obtain home program and uh, follow the same uh, back home. These children are refer to nearby PHC, civil hospital to locate the private occupation that is there. So at least they can go there and follow up once in a month. So these are the percentage satisfied with the NRHM and epilepsy camp. You could see that most of the patients, like 70% were satisfied. The community health worker satisfaction with NRHM, uh, CG training, CHW training, referrals, follow up. Almost everybody was satisfied. So when we have done our effort, it has given the results. And in the next future camp, we found that they are much more uh, sensitive. So what are the future implications? Education and job opportunities for them, task shifting and capacity building, and advocacy. So advocacy is important because uh, available schemes, policies, resources, the government of India has announced the new uh, disability policy in November 2016. The seven new neurological uh, diseases has been included. And therefore, there are a lot of beneficiary which can be obtained. But unless you know the benefit, you will not be able to accept that. Policy building, building resources, uh, like the uh, certification of disability, developing a skill and interest to take up the opportunity in the community-based rehabilitation, manpower for metro, special schools, low-cost aid manufacturing unit, daycare center, vocational training center, shelter workshop, etc. Through the government or non government organization, could be helpful. So, to conclude, uh, if the vision and courage to create new paths are lacking, then the danger is that more conferences will be held, more declarations will be written, more slogans will be advised, and still 98% disabled population will remain totally unaware of the concern being voiced on their behalf. We are talking about them, but they themselves don't know what is going to happen. So that's very important. We have to have universal right to occupational performance. Occupational therapy interventions are not merely concerned with restoring physical functioning. It helping with access and participation in occupation, which are necessary for surviving, well-being, community participation, and exercise of the citizenship. Uh, through the position paper on CDR produced by the World Federation of Occupational Therapies and vision statement of American Occupational Therapist Foundation, the occupational therapist recognizes a universal right to occupational irrespective of disability. And OTs have a professional responsibility to work toward CBR promote the role. And this study says that this is what is important. And then we microanalyze one of the camps data. So what exactly is happening in that? So this is the own camp which happened in April this year. And we had the late milestone in 55 normal in this and there was no entry in the five patients and uh, there were contracture and deformity uh, out of 55 uh, the present in 10% uh, absent in 31 and no entry was 14 uh, patient and then we have aggressive self-harming self-stimulating behavior the present in about 10% of cases aggressive self-harming in 10.18 and ADL, they were dependent 18%, partially dependent about 16%, independent was 19, 34%, and no entry for 3.4%. And the voluntary control and loss of power was poor in 12% of patients, fair in 25, good in 52% of patients. And the comorbidity found in children and on Pune is out of 25 or BDP, CP or ID, autism, ADHD, learning behavior. So all of them were seen and uh, hemiplegia was seen in uh, these many patients. Out of the five, three were hemiplegia, ID was in two patients. 
So these are the interventions which were provided, neurodevelopment, sensory integration, biometric, psychosocial, rehabilitative. In mildly moderately disabled children, a restorative approach was used, and in severely profound disabled children, a maintenance approach was used. And this is a video which my therapist has found in the camp at home, and you could see that what we have been doing. She is doing PhD as well as Ramana. That's uh, what has been done at the camps. Then comes the speech therapist for performance. This is the speech therapist. And we have some of the dedicated, I have two speech therapists each came from Naya Hospital where I was running the neuro rehab department. First of its own kind in the India when I started in 2000. And uh, in addition to that, the speech therapy, six or seven comes from Pune some bank whenever there's a nearby camp. So we have, uh, data from Pune team because they have attended about eight camps and they visited, uh, they saw about 1,500 patients, uh, no, they saw 441 patients out of 3,160 patients, uh, 1,500 till 2017 and then this year, four camps. So there are about uh, eight camps out of four and four, eight, 3,160 patients, they have analyzed 441 patients. And this is the team, they work five, six people together. Um, we give the programs to them. And then out of this uh, 441, the children were 295, adults were 89, and the adults were 57. So and there were epileptic who required the speech and language of 298, and the non-epileptic 143. And this was the age-wise distribution, the children, adults, and adult. And these are the non-epileptic and epileptic and these are some of the observation like number of CP with epilepsy, Down syndrome, ASC with epilepsy, aphasia with post stroke epilepsy, LD with epilepsy, neurogenic uh, stuttering with epilepsy, anxiety, LA, uh, age appropriate language but poor feeding uh, with epilepsy, misarticulation and learning difficulty with non-epileptic, non-epileptic ASD, non-epileptic Down syndrome, learning disability, non-epileptic, global development delay, non-epileptic and mild days and non-epileptic febrile seizures. So we have this data. We presented this paper also from uh, uh, epileptic versus non-epileptic uh, population.
population in one of the camps where the 46 patients were seen and the children were 71 uh, uh, percent, uh, about 15 percent were adolescent. Then. And expressing and the patients, all of them, out of 211 patients which came in the camp, they could see the 46 patients for the speech and language. And these are some of the data. Uh, epileptic versus non-epileptic and uh, they were followed also. This is some of the group speech and therapy which is being given in the camp. So the speech therapist asked them to take out the tongue and do the tongue exercises. And what difference was to children with uh, uncontrolled seizure have high risk of deterioration of cognition language and literacy at all ages and uh, we really need to work on quality of life and I'll come back to that later on. So these are the performer for psychological clinical psychologists who comes in the camp. This is for adults but she also is for children and I'm not presenting children's data because they may be unjust because we do too much. So these are the observation of adults and you could feel that 95% of India is still qualified as poor or low economy, though we are in our uh, low middle economy. And 73% of people live in the rural area. From 85% now it is 73% who lives in the rural area. And 26% of rural India is poor compared to the a meager 13.7% in the urban area. So it's a rural area which is at the front. And poor or low socioeconomic status and epilepsy there in hand in hand. There is an increase in incidence of epilepsy in lower socioeconomic status group when compared with the more affluent population. And lowest SES group are over two times more likely to develop epilepsy in comparison to the higher SES group. And lowest uh, SES is a risk factor for epilepsy as for some of the papers. And these are the again observation uh, during the camp what we are doing from this data. So we have total number of uh, 69 camps, 23,259 patients were seen in this, 1,876 patients out of which adults were 846 and the number of adults with epilepsy from this 846 is 778. So very high percentage of patients with epilepsy were referred for the, to the clinical psychologist. So one of the problems is lack of diagnostic facility treatment non-compliance. Non-compliance is very big because of poverty, literacy, everything coming together and making a vicious cycle. And then non-availability of anti-epileptic drug, lack of education service, inadequate training, non-availability of epilepsy surgery, and the lack of treatment insight for psychiatric comorbidity. So what are the psychiatric 